This matter comes on for a first appearance. Mr. Warren, correct me if I'm wrong, but formal charges have not been filed yet? That's correct, Your Honor. The defendant was arrested. Uh, formal charges have not been filed. By my calculation, I believe they will be due to the court on three, at 3.30 on Monday afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Mercer, anything you would like to say about that? Not regarding that issue, thank you. So the court has reviewed a affidavit in support of a warrantless arrest. The court has found probable cause uh, for the arrest. Specifically, I see that Mr. Watts was arrested for three counts of first degree murder, each a class one felony, and three counts of tampering with a deceased human body, each a class three felony. Again, these are only um, charges that are named in the affidavit in support of the warrantless arrest. It's the district attorney's office who will ultimately decide what charges, if any, are going to be filed. And Mr. Merson, would you like me to advise your client of his right pursuant to Rule 5? Yes, please. Thank you. So, Mr. Watts, I would like you to listen carefully to the rights that you have, okay? Thank you. And so, first, you don't need to make any statements. Any statements you make can and may be used against you. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to counsel. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If you are indigent, you have the right to request the appointment of counsel or consult with a public defender before any further proceedings are held. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And Mr. Merson is the head of the public defender's office, and he is going to represent you today and potentially in the future. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Any plea that you make must be made voluntarily and not the result of undue influence or coercion. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Right now, charges have not been filed, so this is a limited advisement. I intend to bring you back next week once formal charges are filed on Monday, so I can give you a full advisement. But I will tell you that at this point, the court is not authorizing any bail. Um, once I know what the official charges are that are filed by the district attorney's office, I'll inform you of the nature of the charges. If charges are filed, you have the right to a jury trial, and you have the right to demand and receive a preliminary hearing within a reasonable time to determine whether probable cause exists to believe that you committed any of the charges that are filed by the district attorney's office. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. I believe that your lawyer has filed about 16 or so motions on your behalf, including a request for a preliminary hearing. Do you agree, Mr. Merson, that that time period, that 35 days to have a preliminary hearing, doesn't begin until your client appears in court next week once formal charges are filed? I agree. And the I have not seen, correct me if I'm wrong, a proof positive, presumptive, great written motion by your office. Not at this point, Judge. Okay. Okay. And so would you like me to further advise your client of any additional rights? No, thank you. Um, Mr. Bork, what kind of conditions, if any, are you requesting for the protection order given the circumstances? Judge, I'm going to defer to Mr. Wren. Mr. Wren? People are simply asking for the standard protection order uh, under Title 18 at this point, given the deceased nature of the victims. And I assume based on the no bond hold, the issue of possessing or having access to or control over a firearm or any ammunition is a non-issue until and if bond is authorized. That's correct. Thank you. So, Mr. Watts, I am going to issue a protection order pursuant to Colorado Revised Statutes 18-1-1001. It's going to state that you not harass, molest, intimidate, retaliate against any witness involved in this case. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. If you were to violate the sanitary protection order, it's a class one misdemeanor. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And um, could we talk about some of them? I, I realize that things are happening very quickly. Motions were filed today. There hasn't been a lot of time to object or to file responses. Mr. Merson has filed a number of motions, some of which potentially may be time sensitive. My intention is for the parties to come back to court next Tuesday so I could advise Mr. Watts of his formal charges that are filed no later than 3.30 on Monday. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be requiring the prosecutor to file a response between now and Tuesday, or whether we can resolve some of these issues now. For example, 
the preservation of certain evidence, like police notes, handwritten notes, like touch DNA evidence, things of that nature. Your Honor, I think we can address some of these pretty quickly, uh, but certainly not all of them. We would be asking for time to file a written response to some of them. Yeah, I'm just concerned about the time that elapsed between now and Tuesday, and I want to make sure that the evidence that's being requested to be preserved is preserved. I understood. So, for example, can you, uh, any objection for me to order that all law enforcement, both state and federal, that were involved in this case preserve their handwritten notes? Any objection to that? No. So I will grant that request. Did you read Mr. Merson's <coughs> motion with regard to touch DNA? I believe that was filed under seal, and I have not seen it. It, it was suppressed, so they should have had access to it. Gail, can, uh, Christy, can we put out a copy for Mr. Wright? And again, I appreciate the fact that this happened very quickly, and so uh, let me get you a copy of that, a hard copy of that, and then you can review it and let me know what your thoughts are. Is there an autopsy that's scheduled to be conducted in the near future? Not yet. There was a 16. 16? Yes. While we're waiting, Mr. Merson, I noticed that. Actually, you know, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Judge. It was D17. D17? Yeah, sorry. So I, I see that your motions are numbered, but I'm missing 9 through 15. Yeah, I basically counted them and then started off. There were some other people in my office that had filed those other pleadings and not numbered them. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. I don't think you are. I think many of them uh, concern, uh, sorry, many of them concern the media issue. Um, on the way over here, the deputies advised the court had already ruled on that. So to a certain extent, some of that is moot. But if we are going to take a D17, a lot of the fact that the affidavit is still sealed, I would ask that the court uh, seal the courtroom and just allow the parties to argue that because it will require me to talk about information in the affidavit. Well, why don't we give this around an opportunity and let me know whether, without talking about the substance, whether he has an objection or not. It's really more of putting the prosecution on notice than anything else. Why don't you read it first let me know what you think. Um, this you can give to the prosecution. sensitive issues between now and next Tuesday that we should have handled today. I think we need to address it today. As I indicated, Judge, I don't, th at this point there's not an autopsy scheduled or autopsies. Um, I don't know when that might happen. Uh, I don't know if it would happen before Tuesday or not. Uh, with respect <coughs> to this motion, and does the court want to address Mr. Merson's concerns about putting in the courtroom given the sealed nature of this? or? Or may I speak for Well, it was your, I think it's based on the sealing of the <coughs> affidavit in support of the warrantless arrest. And so with your motion to seal, do you think it's, if you think the reasons why you requested the affidavit to be sealed are going to be compromised, we could do this in camera. If you believe it's not, then we can talk about it publicly. I'm not worried about the compromising uh, nature of the affidavit. I will tell the court and make a record that the prosecution has provided Mr. Merson 
with a copy of the affidavit, despite the fact that it was sealed uh, to the public? I, I am concerned about this being discussed in a non-in-camera setting. Um, my concerns uh, revolve around the issues I brought up and the objections to expanded media coverage. Um, it's an ongoing investigation at this point. Um, I, I have concerns about you know, what would be discussed and how that would implicate uh, Mr. Watts' right to a fair trial and his due process right. So my request is that the court seal the court so we can discuss this. Mr. Wright. Uh, move that to the discussion of the court. I, 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 it seems to me, based on everything I've heard, that um, the affidavit is going to be released at some point. It was the prosecution who requested the seal of it. The affidavit, they're not concerned about this being compromised, the investigation being compromised. And so I think we can talk about this publicly. Mr. Wright? And when you say talk about this, are we, the issue, are we still talking about yes. D17? Yes. Yes. Uh, which was also filed under seal. Yes. Um, so with respect to paragraph number three, Judge, our, our concerns relate to the way this is worded. As, as the court knows, uh, the pathologist goes through a very extensive process when conducting an autopsy, much of which is governed by a statute. Uh, I think most of what he's asking for is standard procedure for an autopsy conducted in, in this jurisdiction and would be done. However, I have concerns about the way this is phrased in that it orders collection of trace DNA and touch DNA uh, from certain areas uh, of, of bodies that at this point we don't even have, frankly. Second, uh, we don't know if that trace DNA is going to even exist if we have the bodies. So there's no way to order us to find something that may or may not exist. I think when I read the motion, it essentially is, is putting the prosecution on notice that at some point they may be in possession of exculpatory evidence and their duty to make reasonable efforts to preserve that and ultimately provide that to the defense. And so I think they're on notice by the mere fact that we're talking about this, that Mr. Wren got a copy of the motion and if this becomes an issue later on, we can litigate this, and there are some pretty significant sanctions for the destruction of exculpatory evidence. Okay, so that will be the ruling of the court. Your Honor, may I ask one clarifying question? Because the way that the motion is titled um, talks about the collection of touch or trace DNA at 2825 Saratoga Trail, as well as during the autopsy, but the body of the motion does not. Uh, I want to make sure that Mr. Merson is aware that the home where the um, homicides were alleged to have occurred has been released by law enforcement, it was released as of about midnight last night. So even as it's, we stand today, we are not in a position to be able to go back in and collect um, trace DNA from that home. So I just want to make clear that, um, that the ruling of the court does not require us to do anything affirmative with respect to the home. And Mr. Wren advised me that the government is no longer in control of the home, so I'm aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with regard to the motion for protective order, essentially for nobody to speak to Mr. Watts other than his attorneys and investigators and support staff, I'm assuming there's no objection to that? Correct. You will put, you'll put law enforcement on notice on that issue? Yes. Okay. Any other time-sensitive issues that cannot wait until next Tuesday? Nothing from the video. Mr. Merson? May I just have one second? Sure. Uh, nothing further, thanks, Judge. Okay, and I would just respectfully ask that if you file anything between now and next Tuesday, certainly into the future, if you go advise your office of this, if there's more than one lawyer working on this, please number every pleading that's filed and for the prosecution as well. Maybe you can use letters, and that way I know that I'm not missing something. That'd sure. Be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we'll see. Let's take a time next Tuesday. I know everybody's really busy. I just had some time open up. And so what's a convenient time for everybody to be here? I'm also going to be asking if there's victim rights compliance today and see if, if um, there's a more convenient time for whoever the victim rights representative is.
you know, we have been in communication with the family of the victims. Uh, we are in VR com VRA compliance for that, based on that uh, effort. At this point, we don't have any specific times that are good or bad for the family, but uh, we will certainly contact them as soon as we leave and, uh, and clarify their availability for next Tuesday. How about the attorneys? What's a good time for you to be here on Tuesday? Anytime, Judge. I'll make it work. The motions hearing in Division 12 at 2 o'clock that will probably last an hour, otherwise, I'm free. About 10 o'clock. That's fine. Okay. So the plan is next Tuesday, 10 o'clock. We're going to know whether the prosecution filed formal charges or not, and the deadline for that would be Monday at 3.30. I will give Mr. Watson more detailed advisement, and then we'll decide what the next step is going to be. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, one more thing. Yes. Um, I would just ask the court order that the prosecution give the defense notice as to if an autopsy is to be scheduled, when that is scheduled, so that we can file the appropriate motions. I think you can appreciate why we would want notice of that. Yes. Any objection to that? Not as to the notice issue. Yeah, I'm not going to be ordering that they, at this point, I'm not ordering that they be allowed to be present during the autopsy. Why don't we say 48 hours notice? Is that reasonable? Yes. Uh, and if I learn that information over the weekend, I'll, I'll email Mr. Mercer. Okay with you, Mr. Mercer? That's fine. Thank you. They wouldn't do the autopsy over the weekend, though, would they? No, I don't believe so. They would? They might. They're going to try to get done soon. So 48 hours is probably not going to be able to do it. We've all certainly seen autopsies scheduled less than 48 hours after the bodies are recovered. Um, so we will do our best to comply with the notice requirements as soon as we learn the information. Who would be making the decision on when to perform an autopsy? The coroner's office. So can you communicate with them that there's an order that that uh, there would be 48 hours notice, and if they, for whatever reason, can't comply with that, you'll let Mr. Mercer know? Is the court ordering that uh, the autopsy not be conducted earlier than 48 hours after the recovery of the bodies? No. Okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm ordering that you notify the coroner that there's an order that Mr. Merson is entitled to 48 hours notice, and if they are intending to perform the autopsy sooner than that, they need to let you know before it starts so you can give Mr. Merson reasonable notice. Yes, sir. Anything else you can think of between now and next Tuesday that we can resolve today? Nothing from the prosecution. Nothing from the defense, thanks. Okay. All right, we'll see you next Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We're going to be